Hello and welcome to Sci-Fi Minecart, the show in which we dig up sci-fi shows that no longer get, or have never gotten the attention they deserve, and attempt to bring them back into the light. This episode... Galaxy Quest is a 1999 sci-fi comedy film. It's not quite a parody, but it sort of is, but it really isn't. What I mean by this is that the story follows a group of actors who played the crew of this film's universe's version of Star Trek. This crew of actors is shanghaied into a real-life space conflict in which their ship and all of its functions are based on their show. They then have to draw on their dated knowledge of the show, they've been off air for quite a few years, in an attempt to remember how they acted in the show so they can emulate that acting in real life and survive the conflict. And that's why I say the film is sort of a parody, but not really. The show within the film is a parody of Star Trek, and, well, since they're replicating the show within the movie, in real life within the movie, they're now pretty much emulating Star Trek, and hilarity ensues. So of course you've got the Captain Kirk character, played by Tim Allen, and you've got the Spock character, played by Alan Rickman, who younger generations would remember from his amazing role in Die Hard. And as the Mr. Scott character, we have Tony Shalhoub, who I can never help but see as Monk. Daryl Mitchell playing the child prodigy character, who is actually far, far less annoying than Will Wheaton was on The Next Generation. And then playing the character that doesn't really resemble anyone in Star Trek too accurately. Well, not any main characters. I mean, you could say that she's an Ahura type character, but she doesn't do as much as Ahura, so I, I think she's supposed to just be any generic bridge buddy, but... Playing the pretty girl, who is, of course, the only female in the movie, really, is um, Sigourney Weaver from Aliens, which is pretty cool. It doesn't really look like her, but it is, so awesome. Because the film follows actors of a show, it allows for a lot more self-awareness than it would have if it was just a straightforward parody of Star Trek. For instance, we see the self-aware red shirt, who, who is always resisting going in first or staying alone or anything because he knows that he is there to die. I changed my mind, I want to go back. What the fuss you made about getting left behind? Yeah, but that's what I thought I was the crewman that stays on the ship and something is up there and it kills me. But now I'm thinking I'm the guy who gets killed by some monster five minutes after we land on the planet. We see attacks on poorly written episodes and things in sci-fi that just doesn't really make sense. Because it's on the television well, show! Forget it! I'm not showing it! This episode was badly written! Okay, and then we see a few of the more meta references, like the no doubt head nod towards the hostilities that are reportedly exist between some of the Star Trek original series actors, and the fact that the fans always seem to know a little bit more, or perhaps even a little bit too much about the show, over top of what the actors know about the show. Because the film shows both the show and what is the real life in the movie, there has to be a stark difference between the special effects of the show, which have to be poor to reflect its make-believe, and the special effects in real life within the movie to reflect that it's real life. And they've actually managed to do this to a very impressive degree. When you see the shots of the show, you do get the feeling of the original series of Star Trek. It looks a little bit cheesy and everything looks a little bit fake. But when you see the shots of the ships and the space battles and whatnot in real life, it looks, well, fantastic, especially for 1999. Much of the CG special effects were handled by Industrial Light and Magic, so it's no surprise that looks good, but they've actually gone above and beyond the duty in some areas. For instance, in the original series of Star Trek, when you see the ship get hit by something and all the crew fall over, it's actually just them shaking the camera and the crew rolling around on a non-moving set. But in Galaxy Quest, when people are getting flung around the ship, they're actually on a giant platform which is actually shaking. This gives a much more realistic effect which really does manage to make it contrast with a make-believe in the film. Another interesting throwback to Star Trek is that the theme song of Galaxy Quest sounds a lot like the theme song from Star Trek The Motion Picture. I can't show either of them here because of copyright reasons and whatnot, but either look it up yourself or just take my word for it. They're not the same, but they do invoke strongly. Because of this high quality, the space battle scenes throughout the film are actually really, really exciting, especially for a comedy film. 
Also surprisingly satisfying is the character development in this film. Each character is given an interesting story arc and fleshed out well. By the end of the film, you've grown to like them all and you're happy to see where they end up. So is this still relevant now considering Star Trek the original series has been off air for for around 40 years and even the next generation has been off air for 20 years? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, it is still relevant and it is still funny to audiences of today. This is largely because of its status as not quite a parody. Because it's not Star Trek. If you know nothing about Star Trek, you can still enjoy it. You can quite easily understand the concept of a group of actors who played spacemen not knowing how to actually be spacemen. On top of this, if you're familiar with other sci-fi such as Firefly or Battlestar Galactica, you can easily relate to those shows instead. The jokes, characters and humour within the film are completely self-contained. Galaxy Quest the show does not exist anywhere except for Galaxy Quest the film. And because of this, regardless of your knowledge of sci-fi, and regardless of your knowledge of Star Trek, you are going to enjoy this film quite a lot. The humour is great, the characters are great, the actions, the effects, the makeup and the pacing are fantastic, and if you've not seen Galaxy Quest, I highly suggest you add it to your list of films to watch. If you're still not convinced, may I point out once again that Alan Rickman is in this film, and that should do the job. Thanks for watching. I have been and still am Grim Grindle.